Good morning. It is Sunday, May 17th, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Only two weeks to go until the end of the Easter season on May 31st, Pentecost. But as for today, we continue in Easter tide. We continue to think about how Christ continues to be alive in the world among us. So, welcome to this message for the sixth Sunday of Easter, wherever you are, whenever you are watching, whoever you are with, or if you are alone, I am glad you are here, and let us trust that we are not alone, that when we gather in God's name, even when we are apart, that the Spirit unites us. So would you join me in prayer? Holy One, as we continue our journey through this time, be with us. Be with me today as I speak your word, as I listen for you. Be with all of us as we ponder how you are alive in our lives and as we listen for the comfort that you offer. Amen. So I invite you to hear the scripture for this morning. It is John chapter 14 verses 15 through 21. Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who keep my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The verses we heard today are a continuation from last Sunday, uh, a continuation of the same section of verses. This is part of the farewell discourse in John's Gospel. This is a number of chapters where Jesus is saying goodbye to his disciples. He knows he will be arrested and interrogated and crucified and die. And so he is giving his last instructions and his last bits of hope and encouragement to the disciples. So imagine how those disciples are feeling as they hear these words. They have been following this teacher, this healer, this prophet, this preacher, this religious leader for years. And they've cast their hopes on him. <clears throat> they trust that he's the one to redeem their people, to bring them salvation, to change the world. And here he is saying that he's going to die. Imagine the loss, the grief, the disappointment, the despair, the fear that would come upon them, not knowing what would become of them, of their movement, of their lives, now thinking, oh, all their hopes they had for great change were dashed. So in these verses, in this farewell discourse, Jesus is instructing the disciples on how to live without him, on how to continue his mission and his ministry. But he's also reassuring them. He's comforting them. 
he's offering them some peace and hope in the midst of their despair. And in the verses that we hear today, Jesus makes some claims that are to reassure the disciples. He says, an advocate will be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. And Jesus says, you know this spirit. And this spirit abides with you. This spirit will be in you as if this spirit is a part of them already. Jesus also says that he won't leave them orphaned. He won't leave them alone. Jesus is coming to them. They're not being left after all. And Jesus also says that they will see him soon. And then they will know that Jesus is in God. They are in Jesus and Jesus is in them. Whoa, so that's a lot of big theological ideas. The Spirit is in them, Jesus is in them, Jesus is in God. It sounds like one big sort of unified divine cosmos here. Now I must confess, I've never been a huge fan of John's gospel. He gets a little too theological in a sort of fancy way. Uh, I much prefer Mark and Luke's gospel. They're a little simpler, a little more down to earth. They were written uh, earlier, whereas John was writing around the year 100, so a good 70 years or two generations in that time after Jesus died. So there's a lot of theological interpretation and embellishment and addressing the situation at the time in John's gospel. Um, it's sort of as if I were writing about what happened to my grandmother in March of 1957, before I was born, of course. There would be layers of interpretation and story. So... John can be harder for me. It's easy for me to say, yeah, right, well, you're interpreting things. And so what we get from John today is beautiful, but the spirit in them, Jesus in them, Jesus is in God, it sounds like a lot of fancy theology. I'm not so interested in fancy theology right now. I've talked in previous weeks about how as this virus began to unfold, I was feeling a lot of fear, perhaps like some of you, what would happen, who would get sick, who would die. Now I'm feeling tired, feeling a lot of exhaustion because this short-term crisis that we were all trying to adjust to, this has turned into our lives now, hasn't it? There's no school for the rest of the year. Many of us are hearing from our children's summer camps that perhaps there will not be camp. Uh, things are beginning to reopen, but still no gatherings and distance and masks. It feels exhausting to keep living in this way for who knows how long. And like you, I haven't seen my parents or my friends in two months. Like you, I am sick of worshiping on a screen, as wonderful as it is to see many of your faces, and I am really sick of preaching into my phone. <laughs> But today, despite the challenges and the uncertainty and our exhaustion with just trying to live at this moment in time, our reading for today doesn't need to offer us complicated theology or a complicated uh, Trinitarian formula. 
it can simply offer us hope that we have been hearing the past few weeks, hope and reassurance. For me, today's reading says simply, the divine is with us and with us in many ways. When Jesus says God is going to send another advocate, that word advocate is parakletos in the Greek, paraklete, often translated as advocate or comforter or counselor. It's literally one who comes alongside or one who comes close beside us. The Spirit is one who is alongside us. Not out in front of us, not trailing behind, not quite with us, but beside us. And when this happens to us, when we experience this, this coming alongside of us, we don't soon forget that experience. When I graduated from Divinity School, I started at my first call at my first church just a few weeks after I graduated. It was very exciting. I was 28 and I had never lived anywhere except with a bunch of roommates before. And here I was uh, living in my own house in a parsonage. So I had to buy my first sofa and my first kitchen table and buy a set of pans and plates. I bought my first car, a VW Beetle, I know. I was dating a guy who was in the PhD program in theology and we were very serious and all my friends were still in Cambridge in the city. I would drive in to see them and see my boyfriend and the church I was working at was a big church with lots of staff, seven or eight people. It was very active and for me, the extrovert, this was great. Life was great and exciting and new and I was finally a minister as I had planned and hoped for for so many years. But... I had only been at this church for about six months when that relationship with that doctoral student boyfriend ended. And this was not only uh, heartbreaking and sad and hard, but it was also embarrassing. I had introduced him to the entire congregation, hundreds of people. And now I had to explain that I had broken up with my boyfriend, which made me sound like I was about 14 years old, which made me feel young and immature. Um, and I was already mistaken for a member of the youth group on occasion, so that didn't help. It was a rough time. I remember one morning I was sitting in my office at church and to make matters worse, the church was under construction so I didn't even have a real office. All my things were in boxes in the corner of a dusty classroom in the midst of the construction. Uh, so I was just surrounded by a mess and I'd carved out a little bit of space in the corner and so I was feeling sorry for myself and was miserable and in walked one of my colleagues, and she must have seen something on my face to indicate that it was not a good day, and she simply said, are you okay? Well, I burst into tears, and I told her about the end of my relationship, and she burst into tears as well. And she cried out in surprise and pain. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had known this woman for only six months, yet 
Those few minutes I spent with her on that day were the most comforting and connected few minutes I felt in months because she was with me. She came alongside me in that moment. I have absolutely no recollection of what anyone else said to me um, upon the end of that relationship, not even longtime friends. No idea what anyone said or did for me. But that moment with my colleague remains etched vividly in my mind. It was so powerful that she was fully present and there next to me, helping me hold those feelings. Now, literally 20 years later, I remember it clearly and I will never forget it. A dear friend of mine who I grew up with, she and her mother came to my ordination, which happened just a little before um, this time. And my friend afterwards was saying, wow, we're Catholic and we didn't know what was going to happen at this ordination, but what a privilege to be there. What an amazing thing to see. And then she said, my mom wanted me to tell you something. She said, as you enter your ministry, as you sit with people at their bedside, as you sit with the dying, as you care for people through all manner of events, she said, don't be afraid to cry with people. I guess my friend's mom had had an experience in the hospital and the hospital chaplain came and sat with them and cried with them. And she shared what an incredible gift this was. And at the time I didn't quite get it, but after this experience with my colleague, I got it. What a gift it is to have someone alongside you someone who will come beside you and really be with you, whether that's with tears or with silence or with laughter or with good listening or with a casserole or whatever it is that we need. May we not be afraid to come alongside one another. This is what God promises us in our reading for today. The parakletos, the paraclete, the one who comes alongside us. The spirit is with us. The spirit is beside us. The spirit of Jesus is beside us. God is beside us. So as we continue to move through this time, whether you are afraid or lonely or exhausted or numb or however you are feeling, trust that God is beside you. And because Jesus tells us that spirit is within us, may we have the courage to be beside one another, to embody that spirit for one another. Let us be advocates for each other as we love our neighbors. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we give you thanks that you promise us your presence. You promise us your presence as a divine comforter, a divine helper, an advocate for us, as a presence that will never leave us alone. And we know that sometimes we do feel alone, that we feel abandoned, that we feel isolated, that 
We can lie awake in the middle of the night and wonder what is happening to our world and feel so desperately alone. We can feel overwhelmed by it all, but God, even when we cannot feel you, may we together and with our tradition and our scriptures and our collective experience proclaim together that you are here and will never leave us and will never abandon us. So hear us now as we proclaim our trust in your presence and in your spirit beside us as we pray the way Jesus taught us long ago, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever. Amen. So whatever you carry today and whatever feelings are with you, may you trust that God is beside you. God is beside you now and forever. Amen.